and many times it is the devil, that promotes this feeling to weaken our faith and confidence in God. Bible study with me. Feeling distant from God. In this video, we are going to be covering. Why does God feel so distant? What to read when feeling distant from God? How to stop feeling distant from God? Why do I feel like God is distant? What to do when you feel distant from God? Number 4 will blow your mind so stick to the end. Alright, usually people ask. Why does God feel so distant? When challenges arise. Do you ever feel like God is far away from you? Well, if you feel so or you have ever felt so, the truth is that you are not the only one that has ever felt so. But the important question is, is God really far away from his people? The answer is never. Instead, it is our thought and feeling that makes him seem or look far away from us. And we must understand that feeling is different from reality, whether physical or spiritual. And moreover, point number one is that the use of the word distant with God many times is just anthropomorphism. That's, giving God human attributes, just for the purpose of appreciation, and thorough understanding of a situation. So that people can understand or appreciate how it feels, when our relationship with God isn't as God had desired of us, to enable him to help us or show himself strong. But in the actual sense God is ubiquitous, ever available and closer to us than we may imagine. That is why he is called omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient God. God is everywhere, can do all things, and knows all things. His spirit is like the air we breathe. As the air pervaded the entire space, even so, the Spirit of God is everywhere. Well, you may also ask. What to read when feeling distant from God? Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock, if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. This simply shows that God is always and readily available only if we can invite him. Many times what makes people feel like God is no longer there with them, is a sense of sin and guilt, and at times troubles or difficulty. But in all these God is still as available as ever. And concerning sins and guilt. While we understand that God's eyes do not behold iniquity, that does not mean the absence of God in our situations. God is always available. All we need do is to repent and return to Him. Seek His help, intervention, and reconciliation through Christ. God doesn't hold anyone's past against him or her. All he wanted of us is genuine repentance, and he will receive us back and treat us like we have never sinned. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 21 to 23 confirms this. It says, But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Saith the Lord God. And not that he should return from his ways, and live. You may want to know. How to stop feeling distant from God. Well, God is ever available, but the inability to access the benefits of his availability, which usually makes us feel like he is far, can be compared to someone who has an inferior or faulty device, a phone for example. While the service network is abundantly available, he may find it difficult to access the network service and make use of the phone. It is not because the network service is not available, but because his device is either of inferior capacity or faulty, which cannot allow for a smooth flow of service. Another person with a good and quality device will still come to the same place, make his calls or access his internet hassle-free without problems. Our proximity with God is similar to this analogy. The problem with our relationship with God is usually not about distance, but about the quality of our alignment with his plan, purpose, will, and our obedience of faith. In line with this, Paul wrote in the book of Romans chapter 10 verses 6 to 8. Romans chapter 10 verses 6 to 8. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart, who will go up to heaven? To bring Christ down to earth. And don't say, 
who will go down to the place of the dead? To bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. What Paul was simply saying here is, that we don't need to go anywhere in search of God. God is ever available and can be found even right where we are, if we can establish a quality link, or connection of obedience of faith with Him. Yes, you may still ask but. Why do I feel like God is distant? The feelings of God being at distance from us, is usually informed by our feeling of guilt, or the presence of severe challenges. And at this instance, we lose our consciousness of His divine presence. And many times it is the devil, that promotes this feeling to weaken our faith and confidence in God. Yes, the devil can even go as far as telling you, that God has written you off and abandoned you, or even that God will never have anything to do with you again. You may be surprised to hear that, those are nothing but the tricks of the devil. As we know that the devil has three missions on earth, which are to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. So we must resist the temptation of trying to conclude God by our feelings. God cannot be known or judged that way. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. We live by what we believe, not by what we can see. We should understand that God cannot be found or worshipped through our feelings. For human senses have certain limitations, that make them unreliable in finding God. For instance, you cannot say that there is no God, simply because you cannot see Him, or because you cannot touch Him, or because you cannot hear Him, or because cannot smell Him, or because you cannot feel Him. That is why I say that God cannot be found by our senses' knowledge. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. We live by what we believe, not by what we can see. And this was further stated in the book of John chapter 4 verses 23 to 24. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. It's our faith that set our proximity with God. In Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, the Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. In another word, a man's thought is what determines how it is with him. Your proximity with God is the function of your thought. If you think that God is far from you, then he is, but if you think or believe that he is nearer to you, even so, he is. Yes, it is that simple. Our Lord Jesus, affirms it in the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 29. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. He simply means that it is your faith, that determines what you get. So, when you ask, what to do when you feel distant from God? It is simple, oh yes, you can draw God closer or further away from you. It all depends on your faith. In the book of Mark 11 verses 22 to 23, Jesus makes it clear that nothing is impossible if you can believe it. Mark 11 verses 22 to 23. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. The truth is that feeling that God is far from us, is actually the product of doubt, and lack of faith in God's word. And it is usually prompted or promoted by the devil. And we know that devil is always after our faith. Because once he got us to deny the faith then he has won. For instance, the Bible says in Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 5. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. 
When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee, I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. And in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 from verses 10 to 14. Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Now those are the blessed promises and assurances of God. But the devil will try to get us to doubt, the integrity and the sincerity of God, in keeping to those promises. And once we begin to doubt God, the devil brings the spirit of fear. And once fear sets in, we are already on the losing side. As God will seem far away from us. Because if God is with us, and we really know that he is with us, then where will fear come from? And we know that the spirit of fear is not of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is that devil. So whenever you detect the encroachment of fear, banish it with faith by the divine promises of God. Once you detect fear and feeling of God being far from you, know that the enemy the devil is at work. Don't entertain it, don't take it easy, resist it with holy boldness, with strong backing from the assuring scriptures. Because if the devil succeeds in convincing you, that either God or his promises are not real, or that they are not meant for you, or that you are not qualified for it, then he is already on the winning side but God forbid. So the cure for this malady of feeling that God is far from you is in this single word. Faith. Faith is the cure for doubt, fear, worries, and anxiety. And all of those, are products of a lack of confidence in God and His Word. And are also proofs that you feel that God is far from you. For if you know that God is there with you, there is no number of enemies or type of situation, that can make you fear. Knowing that the most powerful, invincible, indefatigable God is by your side. Now, let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you. Thank you Father for your love that has kept us from destruction. Dear Lord, take away from us the spirit of fear, because your word has made us understand, that fear is not from you. Give us the spirit of faith and boldness, to always keep believing you, in all things at all times and in every situation. Cause us to be always conscious of your ever-abiding presence. Thank you, dear Lord, for we know you have heard and answered us. For this, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today to share the Word of God. We share the Word of God on this channel every week and you are invited to be one of us. Here is another video titled, Take It to God in Prayer carefully handpicked for you to watch next. Click on the video to watch now, for we believe that it will enrich you immensely. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing. And leave a comment in the comment box telling us you have subscribed. We will definitely respond to you immediately. God bless you.